Um, thanks for everyone for this time. Um, uh, I know people have difficulties in pronouncing my name is Shimuri. Um, I'm going to present about I'm going to present about the control of cylindrobutia um, fungica and cylindrobutia pallida in the Northern Cape and also in the Eastern Cape. Uh, I work for Sami uh, uh, in those two provinces for early detection and quick response. <coughs> um, uh, these two plants are actually coming from the uh, southwestern USA and the northern Mexico. Um, these two plants are actually coming from Western USA and uh, Northern Mexico. In South Africa, these plants are actually found um, in the arid um, areas in the, of the Northern Cape, uh, Western Cape, and also the uh, Eastern Cape. Um, <coughs> they have all have spikes um, that make them untouchable and also, they grow up to 1.5 meters high. I hope everyone can hear me. Yes. Oh, thanks for the contrast. <laughs> okay, in my background, um, uh, in the northern Cape, the Indropuntia fal falgida has been surveyed. Um, so, in 114 farms uh, around uh, Uppington, and those uh, farms were covering about 730,000 uh, hectares. So, this, uh, the map shows uh, the farms that have been visited. Um, so, each dot represents a farm. So, if you check where they can see along this lot of dot congested, that shows uh, it's actually a lot of uh, homestead. A lot of homestead um, that, yeah, that we have actually visited to find the localities of the boxing club. So what happens is that um, 109 farms out of 114 has been found to be invaded. Um, as you can see that the blue represents the invaded ones and the red is those that are at risk. Um, in the Eastern Cape, we, we found uh, the, the both plants to, in, the, in those towns, Graff, Rennet, Abedin, and the Clip Lab, and also the farm outside um, Jazzelville. Um, we have cleared 338 hectares of Zildrobutia uh, Fargida and uh, 585 of uh, Palida. We found and cleared in those towns. Uh, management options. Um, chemical control, we actually tried the foliar spray. Um, we sprayed uh, uh, gallon for 80, uh, three clopper 80 ingredient. Uh, we have it tried the stem injection. Looking at the structure of the plant, we, for sure we need the type of Injection, so I don't know that we can use to spray since that you can't touch the plant. Um, biocontrol, biocontrol was also released for the Cylindrobutia fargida in the Northern Cape. Um, uh, chemical control that we have been tried, I don't know how we can implement it. Um, and the combination of chemical and fire. That has actually took, it, took place. Uh, we went to spray, and six months later, the farmer decided to, to invite working for fire. And they burned those things. Uh, I into the boxing lab around 2000 and December 2011. That is in Aska. So when we monitor, we find that after three months, the plant still look the same. There is no change. And, um, we advised to come spray around winter, so we waited until uh, after seven months when we got there, we found that the plant is starting showing that is uh, the effect of the 
the design. So the first picture is actually for boxing club. So um, after a year, and then the plan was actually total. Uh, the, in that farm, I think the chemical learning was successful because we didn't we follow up in that area. We always prayed once and all these plants were killed. Um, we sprayed the 139 uh, hectares in the northern Cape. Um, uh, while in the eastern Cape is 338 hectares of the same plant. For chemical control, foliar spray for Palida, we actually um, it actually took about five five months in charge of the plant to, to, to die. So if we check them spread around March and around uh, September the plant will actually dead. So the episode is also effective in clear in terms of uh, controlling uh, such plant. It actually takes longer to show the effect. Um, for biocontrol as you can see, um, last year, August 2012, we actually released uh, the biocontrol, and then after five months, around January, and then that is the effect of the biocontrol. The um, cochineal inside uh, the tulipia stomatosa. Um, I'm convinced that uh, through the result that I've seen, it's actually effective. Uh, not only to control, but to eradicate. Uh, the question is, uh, I'm sure it's going to eradicate the plant because when we first released, it actually uh, finished uh, in less than two years. Uh, the, as I indicated in the eastern cave, we also spray and the farmer decided to bend the area, so he's checking the second photo. Um, 27 hectares was burned by the land of the invited women for fire chips that came and put fire on the stacks. So, so far it has, it has, been, it has been eight months and there is no regrowth of any plant. So we continue to monitor such plants to see if there will be a regrowth. Uh, in my conclusion, I uh, just want to say um, working with chemicals, it requires uh, um, spraying this uh, plant, it requires more chemicals to be using the plant. Since uh, we have seen the pictures, we have to spray the whole plant, otherwise, if you spray and you miss one piece, that piece uh, will resist and will grow. Um, weather conditions should be taken into consideration. Um, Sometimes when it's too hot, you can't use it beside them. Also when it's too cold, you can't use it beside When it's rainy, you can't use it beside When it's windy, you also can't use it beside So that great problem. Especially they stay here because of the caro winds. People work in the morning from there, it's a problem. So the other thing is the chemical. Sometimes you, um, you, you also you get, you also spray um, we spray on the targeted plants, but it's actually resulted in some non-targeted plants being also sprayed. Uh, Biocontrol, it requires more monitoring uh, since, um, like the example of the first area we put it, we are expecting that it will take longer to finish that area, but it was so quick that you need to do regular monitoring so that you don't run out of your, of the, Coaching in those reserves. Um, um, the question is, uh, can bio, uh, I'm saying biocontrol should actually be the preferred method to plants that have actually biocontrol in it, just like the FRG. I think the continuous of failure spray should stop and then we focus more into the use of biocontrol. Um, are used fire as management option for the syndrome of Kutia Palida? That's the question that I raised to you. Um, thank you very much. I would like to acknowledge Linda that she is the leading person 
minden bajokatra a program. Thank you, Shabiri. Um, are they... Wow! All right, I've got the mic, so I'm really good. Um, why would you... Why do you suggest... Why are some questions about whether we should use fire to control it if, if biological control seems to do the job already? Um, the biological control is actually for Fungi that the Palida has in their biocontrol. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm just want to talk about the use of fire. Um, it's a it's a touchy, sensitive subject, but uh, uh, we currently, as a problem, we are really looking into the use of fire as part of the control methods, not only for this species, but uh, the, the, some research that has shown that, uh, for instance, uh, paraffin wheat in case of end, they've shown that the recruit after putting fire in terms of estimating grass to for 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 game that showed that. But um, just I'm also interested to hear what's the response from people around the use of fire. But as the initial certain people we are really thinking about the use of fire. Thanks. Yeah Trevor, I don't think you gave the full story about the fire there because the plants that are really being sprayed, and there were these huge clumps of thorns with dead tallows, but in amongst them were still the live young plants and things that hadn't, been, hadn't got any herbicide onto them. And the fire worked really well there because it got rid of all the piles of thorns and it scorched those green tallows that had escaped the herbicide. I think if you were just going to spray a, a large plant that hadn't, been, hadn't died from the herbicide, it's, 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 it's not a very, I don't think it would be a very good option because those thick stems would, would survive the scorching and then they would just shoot again. Do you agree with me? That's just a comment about it. Uh, just to add on that, um, the, the FIRE method was actually a landowner initiative which we didn't know about. We went and sprayed and as the plant was drying out, the landowner decided to invite working on FIRE. So when we got there, we amazed that the plants were actually banned because we're there to actually monitor the success of our herbicide control and when we get there, we get to black plants. So um, we then agreed that as from now, we are actually going to start monitoring the, the sites to see if uh, is there any regrowth. And so we are going to be actually monitoring this method quite closely and see if it's a possible method that, that can be used or if it's a no-no. So we will um, investigate it further. As a follow-up, you spray the plant first, you know? Don't burn them in before you yeah, you first spray. So it doesn't follow. Any more questions or comments?